67. Up. Yeah, 820, 116. Get the fuck out of here. That's what it reads, is it not? Oh my god! World Cup and we already uh, did some test passes on the Blue Goose and it went 767 at 178 or so actually let me look at the time slip the Blue Goose reset its own uh, 6R80 record at sorry for the oil on it but it went 767 with a 2 at 178 it has gone 183 before so we know there's much left in it but it has cut nothing but 118s here now we did experience some issues last night Number one, we found a puncture on one of the tires. These are 315 5017s on some beautiful Bellac wheels. But aside from that, there was a puncture. Now they do not patch these and this track, Mickey Thompson's at the track, they do not stock these. They don't have these at all. So what I did is went to our backup set that are on a set of billet specialty wheels. The previous record was set on these tires. It already broke the record on a 305. We might be able to go faster on a 305 than the record we did last night. We did order a set of tires though and had them next day aired. So they'll be on those rims maybe tomorrow for the second session of qualifying and we should be good to go. Senior right now is doing some maintenance on the car. And we uh, drained the catch can. This is why you have a catch can in the car, okay? So we're here pitted next to Keith Rhea and his six second Cobra. He's a great guy helping us out, letting us use his, uh, his little side by side and he's helping with extra little things that we don't know about. He's a great help, great wealth of knowledge. So I'll keep you guys updated as to what's going on here. We're gonna tech in today, meaning they're gonna check over to see if the car is legal to run the number it's gonna run. So that's what's next. You're gonna tech the car in. We're running Street Fighter in the uh, World Cup Finals Imports versus domestic in MIR in Maryland International Raceway. We'll see how it goes. So we're checking to see if the Bluetooth audio still works on this race car. See if we can hear some. Turn up the volume. Turn the volume here up. <laughs> it works. No bass. It's okay. So it works. You know what? You should just listen to music all the way down the track. <laughs> That's great.
after the transmission broke. Um, it seemed to have broken when the car lost traction. Um, the car bit really hard and once boost came in, those little 305s could not handle it. It shook, broke the transmission. We think it broke the, I think it's the forward shaft, which is the last remaining stock part on that transmission. Then, after we were having dinner and just talking, I think Junior just told Dad, hey man, I don't give a crap what you say, I'm coming down with the spare trans that Power by the Hour built with all billet parts, and we're gonna replace it at the track and qualify for this event and get in and race. So that's the plan today. Go back to the track, uh, get the transmission replaced. It still has reverse, so that's what told us that it's not anything catastrophic in terms of rear end, axles, anything like, or, you know, the motor's fine. The transmission, the last remaining stock part of the transmission broke, so we're gonna head back to the track, replace the 6R80 transmission, make sure that we get everything squared away, and see if we can qualify for this event. So let's get back to the track. Okay, so we got our transmission delivered to the track by Junior and Brent. We're gonna put the transmission on that and make our way back to the pits. All right, we got the other transmission in the back. John is uh, freezing his ass off. It's like 45 degrees. Yeah. It's too cold. So the leaves are pretty much fell off the trees yesterday from the funnel cloud. So uh, we're gonna get it back into the Blue Goose as soon as possible. Somebody was nice enough to let us borrow their beautiful trailer mr sibarowski was very nice we winched it up there now let's get cracking on the trans okay apparently they got the transmission in so let's go take a peek all right there we go transmission installed all righty Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just documenting. Don't mind me. And just like that, it started at about 9 o'clock or so. And what time is that? I have no idea what time it is, but maybe three hours later, I got everything situated, filled up with fluids, ready to go hit up. Maybe by the time the second round of qualifying comes through on Friday, today, we should be good to go. So let's see how it goes. Okay, we have officially finished axle replaced, trans replaced, tested the bump, tested the two-step trans brake, everything is as it should. So now these are the final preparations before we get up to the line and make some runs in the car and see if we get better at time of 7.67. Man, I'm tired. But she's done. Let's see if we can better the 7.67. And if she's happy, we'll shoot for 7.50s.
caused the car to have bumper dragging wheelie conditions all of a sudden? Well, the only thing that was different in the logs was the converter coupling sooner. Yes, after replacing the transmission and a new fresh set of fluids, the converter coupling sooner was the only variable. Everything else was exactly the same as the 82, 80, and 767 runs. Everyone is out there trying to help saying you got to strap that front end down. We know this. We had it figured out for a very long time. All of a sudden, it started to do this bumper dragging silliness. So we'll get the front end fixed, get it figured out, and run that low seven very soon. Thanks for listening, guys. The Blue Goose will be going 750s before you know it. Talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.